Good morning, everyone. Would you please stand as we sing our first hymn, The Kingdom of God is Justice and Joy. Good morning and welcome to you, the family of God, as we gather here today for worship. Special welcome to Dawn and Henry, who have joined us from Motueka, and Bill and Philippa, who have joined us from Wellington. And uh, to any other visitors who are here today, welcome. And it's too a special welcome to those who are joining us uh, via the camera on live stream. It's great to gather here at Christchurch Cathedral uh, to worship God this morning. We continue on the top of page five. Etafano Atekaraiti, welcome to this holy table. Welcome to you, for we are Christ's body, Christ's work in the world. Welcome to you whose baptism makes you salt of the earth and light to the world. Rejoice and be glad. Praise God who gives us forgiveness and hope. Amen. Amen. Christ is our light, joy of our salvation. Praise and glory to Christ, God's beginning for humanity, making ritual water, gospel wine, cleansing all our worship. Love and loyalty to Christ who gives us the gospel. Praise to Christ who calls us to holy. Let us pray. Christ is the living water, cleansing, refreshing, making all things new. Christ is the living bread, food for the hungry, strength for the pilgrim and the laborer. We say together, so now, so now we, we offer, offer our, our thanks for the, the beauty, beauty of, of these, these islands, islands. For the, the wild, wild places, places in the bush, bush for the, the mountains, mountains, the coast, and, and the sea. We, we offer thanks and praise to God for this good land, for its trees and pastures, for its plentiful crops, and the skills we have learned to grow them. 
with our thanks for Marai and the cities we have built, for science and discoveries, for our life together, for Aotearoa, New Zealand. We come seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to be and do as members of Christ's body. In God, there is forgiveness. Loving, Loving and all-seeing God, God, forgive, forgive us where we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us where we have failed to serve you and where our thoughts and actions have been contrary to yours. We ask your pardon. God forgives us. Be at peace. Rejoice and be glad, for Christ is resurrection, reconciliation for all the human race. We, we shall, shall all be one, one in Christ, Christ one, one in our, in our life, life together. together. Praise, Praise to God, God who has created us. us. Praise, Praise to God, God who has accepted us. us. Praise, Praise to God who sends us into the world. world. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Together, faithful, faithful and, and compassionate God, God Jesus, Jesus was, was not, not received in his hometown, hometown and, and still we fail to recognize you. Grant us hearts and minds receptive to your word and give us the love and will to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson is from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand, and the ears of all the people who were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads, and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understanding, under, sorry, understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and the scribe, and, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God, do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Second lesson is from the Epistle of Paul 
to the Ephesians, chapter 2, beginning verse 13. But now, in Jesus Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body. Through the Christ thus putting, putting us to death, that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit, the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built. Together, spirituality into a dwelling place for God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing the hymn, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. Oh, uh-huh. 
We have the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter beginning at the 14th verse. Praise and glory to God. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? This is the gospel of Christ. Please have a seat. Loving God, as we continue to move through Epiphany, please continue to show us the full realization of who Jesus is, that we may live for him and let his glory reign in our lives. Amen. There was once a man who fell into a pit and he couldn't get out. Buddha said, your pit is a state of mind. A Hindu said, this pit is for purging you and making you more perfect. Confucius said, if you would have listened to me, you would have never fallen into the pit. A new age person said, Maybe you should network with some of the other pit dwellers. A council official said, do you have a permit and risk assessment for that pit? An optimist said, things could be worse. And a pessimist said, things will get worse. But Jesus, seeing the man, took him by the hand and lifted him out of the pit. As we journey through the season of Epiphany, the key question in the Gospels and for us is, who is Jesus? Last week, we saw Jesus perform the first sign, revealing his glory by changing water into wine. And today in Luke's Gospel, we get a glimpse of a day in the life of Jesus as he travels around teaching in the local synagogues. What becomes clear is that in Jesus' words and in his deeds, we see the full glory and authority of God. As we hear what Jesus said and the miracles that he did, it is clear that his reputation was beginning to spread. He was becoming famous for his teaching. People were talking about him. They were excited to come and hear him. And so it's not surprising that when he went into the synagogue in his hometown, he was handed the scroll to read and to teach from. This was not a special occasion. 
This was a normal synagogue gathering. They would have begun with the Shema prayer from Deuteronomy 6. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Then they would have had prayers, followed by a reading from the law, the Torah, then a reading from the prophets. As was the practice, both of these were first read in Hebrew and then translated into Aramaic, the local language. And then came the interpretation or the exposition, what we know today as the sermon. And this is where Jesus came and spoke. And this pattern of reading and exposition is what was set when we heard of our reading from Nehemiah 8, as God's law was read to the people, as the temple was rebuilt, and it was interpreted to them for their daily living. And finally, the service closed with the benediction. And so Jesus takes the scroll of Isaiah, and he reads and interprets it by saying, these words from Isaiah that talk about a prophetic figure who brings about God's promised salvation. That is me, says Jesus. In choosing these passages from Isaiah, Jesus is making a very specific claim that he is not only the one anointed by God to bring God's message of a new era as a prophet, but he is also the one anointed by God to deliver on that message and to bring it about. He is the promised Messiah who will make happen the release that he has proclaimed. So what does Jesus mean when he talks about release? We get a clue in the phrase Jesus used to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This comes from Leviticus 25 and the idea of Jubilee, which now becomes the model for the salvation that Jesus brings to all. The year of Jubilee follows seven cycles of seven Sabbath years. It is the 50th year when all debts are canceled, all land returned, and all of those in bondage are set free. Wouldn't it be great if after 50 years, our mortgages or our credit card debts were wiped out? The slate is wiped clean. The people can now have a fresh new start. So in Jesus, we see the offer of a new start through divine deliverance, what we commonly call God's grace. Through Jesus, our debt is paid with God, not once every 50 years, but once and for all. It is gone, so we can begin anew. So who is Jesus? He is the one anointed by God for a specific ministry to set people free. He is a prophetic figure who declares the arrival of God's new era. The kingdom of God is here now. He is the one who will bring about the release he has proclaimed. Jesus is the promised Messiah. Jesus is God with us. And as we know, Jesus does all this by dying on the cross to then be raised again as Lord of all. Just as we heard in our reading from Ephesians 2, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Now in New Zealand, we have a certain way of thinking called the tall poppy syndrome. If someone talks themselves up, 
society and individuals have a bit of a habit of trying to kind of bring them back down to earth. We don't like, for some reason, shameless self-promotion. And we can be a bit harsh on people that excel. I think we see a bit of this in the people's response to Jesus. People are impressed by Jesus and by his teaching. But hang on, isn't this Joseph's son? If we read further on in the account, however, the situation changes for the worse. People are amazed by Jesus and his teaching, but they remain skeptical. They want Jesus to prove himself, which is an interesting response because it's the same response we hear from the devil earlier on in chapter four, when Jesus is tempted in the desert. Prove yourself if you are the son of God. In response, Jesus then points to the one of the lowest periods in Israel's history, when the people were furthest from God. In this time, God acted through the prophets, Elijah and Elijah, but not for the people of Israel. God acted for the Gentiles. Jesus here is saying to his hometown, your current age is just like it was back then. You are far from God. And in response, they tried to throw him off a cliff. However, for us, we might have a different response. We might ask, how do these words apply to us? Especially as Jesus talks about the poor, about being released, and about regaining one's sight. So what do these words mean for us as the church? In this passage, Jesus defines his ministry and, so, and does so in the power of the Holy Spirit. For us, we can look to the quote often used to define our mission. It's not so much the case that God has a mission for the church as that God has a church for his mission. Our mission as the church is to hear, discern, and follow God's mission in the world. We are, as others have said, his hands and his feet. We take our lead from Jesus. Second, in choosing the words from Isaiah that refer to Jubilee, Jesus talks about the poor, the blind, and the oppressed. God's mission includes all people, and God cares about those who are vulnerable and whom society leaves behind. We know in our society that the gap between the rich and the poor is growing more and more each year. More and more people and families go without the basics of life. How can we let God lead us and reach out to those in need? And I know that many of you are engaged in those kind of activities. We can also talk about the spiritually poor, as many in our society do not recognize their need for God. Their eyes, in a sense, are shut. And there are also those who do recognize their need for God. They are spiritually open, but they don't know where to turn. These are the people of peace that God brings across our path. And we need the confidence and the courage to have those spiritual conversations when the opportunity arises. We can also look at our own lives and ask in what ways am I spiritually poor or am I spiritually blind? It is very easy to feel that sin is everywhere but in my own house. But the reality is, we all need the release, the sight, and the freedom that only Jesus brings. We have a choice to let Jesus in or not. 
We cannot change others, but we can let Jesus change us. And we also need to see our role in the bigger picture to bring about the freedom, the release that Jesus talks about as we look at the big issues in the world and in New Zealand, such as climate change or poverty. The way to start fixing what is wrong in the world is to start fixing ourselves. We all have a role to play. The comedian Miranda Hart recently posted this quote from a 10-year-old boy who was terminally ill. And he says, every day, everyone in the world should do at least one thing nice for others. Doing so can help each person believe in himself or herself more fully and give confidence that may inspire each person to do more and more new and good things for the self for the others, and for the world. Those positive attitudes and actions can be the first steps of many steps towards the journey to world peace. And world peace, harmony, and confidence are essential for our future. And that's from a 10-year-old. When we ask the question, who is Jesus?, we see in the Gospels a very clear message. Jesus is the promised Messiah. He is the full presence of God with us. He is Lord over all. Jesus not only gives teaching that inspires, he is the one that brings about the new life that he promised. Because of Jesus, we have been released from our old lives and brought near to God. We are set free to live for God and to be part of God's mission in the world. So may we place our hope and our trust, may we place our lives in Him. Amen. We stand for the affirmation of faith. You, O God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks to God's goodness. Heavenly Father, you've promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. In our diocese and parish, we pray for all involved in managing our financial resources, that constructive approaches can be taken in these days of diminished investment returns to organizations and to parishioners, so that your church may be enlivened for its mission and fresh life may be breathed into all your people. We pray for the world. Over the last week, we've heard and seen of the dramatic and catastrophic volcanic eruption in the Tonga Archipelago. We pray that, notwithstanding the difficulties posed by COVID increases in the area, material help can be provided uh, to the Tongan people. And we remember that Tonga 
is part of our own free tikanga church. And so that that may lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace and that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. We pray for the community. As we near the end of the school and university holidays, we pray for the children and youth in our region and throughout New Zealand, so that you, the God of truth, may inspire with wisdom all those young and the older whose decisions affect the lives of others, and that all may act with integrity and courage. We pray for those in need. Many of us acknowledge that the COVID pandemic has increased the split between rich and poor in New Zealand. We pray for constructive approaches uh, to bridge this divide and pray that God of hope may comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, spirit, or financial stress, and that they may know the power of your healing love. We remember those who have died and those who mourn, especially the Fraser family following the death of Liam, husband and father. We pray in silence for ourselves and for our ministries. So now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We stand for the peace. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace. Breaks down the walls and divide. The peace of God be always with you. We worship God with our tithes and offerings as we sing the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
past and present, that your people will remember your son. Thank you for his cross and rising again. Take courage for his ascension. We look for his coming in glory. and love be yours this and every day from us and all people here and everywhere Amen Christ is the bread of life Christ is risen from the dead
continue our service on page 16. Blessed be God who calls us together. Praise to God. Blessed be God who has forgiven our sin. Praise to God. Blessed be God whose word is proclaimed. Blessed be God who alone has called us. Therefore we offer all that we are and all that we shall become. Accept, O God, our sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. Accept our thanks for all we have done. Our hands were empty and you filled them. As a reminder that after the service, there is a cup of tea uh, in the quiet room, so please feel free to join us if you are able. And you'll notice on the, my bit on the front page of the uh, pew sheet, uh, some information there about the Anglican Mission Board, uh, their appeal uh, for Tonga. Would you please stand as we sing our final hymn. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.